Hello my friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I wanted to come on and do a channeled love message with this deck. So this deck is usually connected to counterparts. So if you're watching this, you probably resonate with being a counterpart. Um, if you don't know what a counterpart is, it's a soul connection. Um, you only, Twin Flames counterparts are rare and you only have one. Whereas soulmates, you can have many soulmates. Um, and with counterparts, it is a... The reason I'm bringing this up... I wonder where that card is. The reason I'm bringing this up is because somebody um, in my comment section said they had no idea what I was talking about when I said Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine. Where is that card? I feel like I'm there it is so I'm, I'm just gonna pull this card so that I can explain in somebody else's words other than my own right now because clearly I'm struggling with my wording twin flame purpose you only have one and they're rare um Purpose to live life separately, learning lessons, possible reunion after becoming stronger and awakened, single soul split in half before reincarnate, reincarnating into two separate bodies. Um, so usually what happens is there's usually, you know, well, again, I'm just going to give a quick explanation for people who don't know. Um, usually, you know, you come together quite serendipitously. There's a magnetic attraction. There's usually some type of blockage or societal difference. Um, or, you know, someone like there could be a huge age difference or you could come from different sides of the earth, world, whatever. Um, you could come from different cultures. There could be societal opinions about your connection. I'm not sure if I've married a <laughs> married. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it, but sometimes counterparts like one or both can be married. And it's a connection that's meant to trigger it triggers you into your awakening. And it really is meant to help you evolve and grow into the highest version of yourself. And it can be very messy. Um, so yeah, usually what happens is you come together quite like magnets and then very quickly triggers start to happen or tower moments start to happen, blockages begin to appear. And it's meant to, like this says, purpose to live life separately learning lessons so it's almost like you're brought together and then you're separated to learn all these lessons and then once those lessons are learned and the growth has happened and the healing has happened and the spiritual growth has happened you're meant to come back together into union um not all twin flames you know not all twin flames come back into union and i know that that's changing now that there's, you know, information and guidance for counterparts in Twin Flames. Um, a lot of, you know, counterparts, divine feminines typically, um, are now learning how to work with the energy and to focus on themselves. Anyway, that was a long explanation. <laughs> so right away we have surrender. So... The person you're connected to could beginning could be beginning to surrender to the intensity of this connection, surrendering to the connection itself, surrendering to thinking about you. Um, it says not resisting. So you could have been dealing with someone who was resisting this connection. With counterparts, usually there's a chaser and a runner. Um, the chaser, you know, chases the connection, tries to bring you back together. Um sometimes overlooks bad behaviors because they're in chasing energy and then the runner runs from the connection um there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there about counterparts and there's a lot of opinions and a lot of people who have never experienced it just label it toxic um but anyway 
not resisting but going with the flow, may feel mentally and physically relaxed, letting go of judgment and being mindful in the present. So you could also be someone who is surrendering to the fact that you are a twin flame. Um, you know, a lot of divine feminines question it. They wonder if they're delusional. Um, a lot of divine feminines try and let go of the connection, try and move away from it, and then realize that energetically, you know, they still feel connected to that person. So you could be someone who is surrendering to your counterpart journey. Um, you could be, you know, again, really doing the work when it comes to healing and maybe your spiritual growth and finding your soul purpose. We have family ties that was there. I didn't read it, but there could be, you know, outside opinions from families or maybe, you know, somebody in this connection has a family or is married. Um, we have Aquarius. Family can also be the fact that maybe both of you have... Tr both of you have family wounding or generational trauma. All right, that's enough of that. Let's see what your person wants to say. What does your person want to say to you? What does your person want to say to you? We have desensitize, emotionally detached due to fear or unwanted behaviors. Feeling numb and suppressing feelings either through drugs, alcohol, or some other addictive behavior. So we have Taurus, Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Libra that I've seen so far. The pain of our separation is tearing me apart. I don't know how to handle my feelings and emotions. Instead of working through the pain, I use and take whatever helps me feel numb. So it doesn't just have to be like drugs and alcohol. This person could be distracting themselves with hobbies. They could be distracting themselves with work, with video games, with TV. Um, take it as it resonates. So let's see what your person wants to say to you. I'm hearing a knocking at the door. That's interesting. We have Leo. So we have patience coming out, persevering in the face of delay, suffering in silence, but holding out, continuing on with life's struggles, but having hope things will turn out fine. I just want you to know how much I miss you and how much you mean to me. It's been difficult moving on without you, but I'm waiting for the perfect time to return and I am trusting in the process. Um, so this could be, it feels like this is someone who is still experiencing struggles in their life. Um, and to me, with that desensitize, I'm not sure if that's current energy that could have been past energy where this person, you know, tried to forget about this connection. It looks to me like this person has hope, though, that you and that you can mend this connection. Um, that's giving the energy of temperance. So someone being very patient about coming towards you, being very careful about the timing. We have inner turmoil. We have Gemini. I can't even remember everything I've seen. Libra, Sagittarius, Taurus, Leo, Gemini. Was that it? I wasn't always there when you needed me the most. Instead of trying to comfort you, I would jump ship because I couldn't deal with my own emotions, let alone yours. So you could have been dealing with someone who was an avoidant, someone, remember the desensitized card. So instead of dealing with their own emotions, instead of, you know, comforting you or being compassionate with you, they could have just avoided you, pushed you away, ran from this connection. Um, it definitely feels like there's a hint of avoidance in your person's energy. And I have to tell you that avoidance is learned through childhood. It's not like this person. Oh, here we go. I'm feeling very ranty today. Um, just because someone is an avoidant doesn't make them an a-hole. 
or a jerk or someone who's unworthy of love. And just because someone is anxious attachment doesn't make them needy or clingy or any of those things. Um, that's learned behavior. If you're dealing with an avoidant, chances are they grew up in a household where their parents did not meet their needs. So they learned to avoid, you know? Um, anyway, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today. <laughs> We have Cosmic Love, 14, the energy of temperance, connected in the 5D regardless if d disconnected in the 3D. Intense or strong feelings that they feel are everlasting, powerful, or otherwise indescribable. And this always makes me think of the song Electric Love. Um, anyway, it's, it's clear to me this person feels that 5D connection with you, so they think about you all the time. They see things that remind you Remind them of you. They could be dreaming about you a lot. Even though we are not together, we are connected through and through. When I sleep, I dream of you, I told you. When I'm awake, I think of you. I am able to feel you as if you were physically here. So, you know, the fact that you and this person share that connection, and, you know, it, it looks like this person may be going through some struggles, you can send them loving energy. Um, it works much better than the negative Nellies in my comment section. Um, sending them love and light and healing works much better than being angry and resentful. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> anyway, we have unsent messages. This is an interesting one. So this is someone who's possibly writing you messages and not sending them. They could be keeping notes in an app or they could be journaling about this. Won't admit their true feelings, thinks about reaching out, but is apprehensive and then does not. So something is stopping them. And I just did a reading where I was very ranty. <laughs> and I was talking about how it's not as simple as if they wanted to talk to me, they would, especially not with soul connections. If this person wanted to talk to you, but by talking to you, they would hurt you or be toxic with you then you're being protected from that. Again, it's not as simple as if he if they wanted to talk to me, they would. It's not as simple as that. Something is stopping them energetically, okay? Types up message, picks up the phone, but never hits send or dials. Um, that's making me think of a song, actually, which, let me just get it for you. Channeled song coming in. I don't even know who's... Oh, there it is. There it is. I found it. So, listen, listen to the song that's coming through. It's called The Truth by Natalie 2V. Um, I suggest that you listen to it because... You and this person are connected in the 5D, and this is a song that I'm channeling, which, you know, is a good, a good indication that there's a message in it for you. So you should listen to it, but I'm just going to read it to you first. I hate that we're not talking. I miss our late night walking. When I was yours and you were mine, strangers in love make me sick. But the hardest part is we were right at the wrong time. Here's the truth. I'm scared I'll stay in love with you. All the little things you do will stay on my mind. Part of me is so afraid you'll always be the one and only missing piece made to be mine. Will your birthday always kill me? Will I watch our favorite movie without these teardrops in my eyes? That future makes me feel sick. But oh, the hardest part is that we were right at the wrong time. Um, that's a repeat. Are you laying in your bed thinking about us and the time we shared? Are the same scenes running through your head? Are you lonely, lonely like me? When you're out there drinking with your friends, do you ever put a heart in a drunk, drunk text? Stare at my name and never hit send. Are you lonely, lonely like me? I'm going crazy without you. Anyway. The Truth by Natalie 2V is the song that's being coming through from your person. So take it as it resonates. 
And you know, I'm sure that you would resonate with that. Um, I'm sure that you would resonate with that as well. Um, I don't think I read this. I really want to tell you how I feel, but is it too late? Will you understand what I'm trying to say or will you misinterpret my messages? I'd rather not say anything at all. Interesting. And we have inner turmoil on the bottom. So this person fight between the mind and heart, feeling worried, conflicted, agitated, and unhappy with life's choices. Um, and, you know, you could mirroring counterparts, you pick up on each other's energy. So you could be feeling the same battle between your mind and the heart, your ego and the heart. We have insecurities, unsure of who and where they are in life, wears a mask to hide their feelings in fear of rejection, constantly covers up who they are in fear of what others might think of them. And I feel like this is someone who could be their authentic self with you. If you really knew who I was and how I felt, you may not love me anymore. I'm afraid you'll reject me if I show you who I really am. So this person feeling very insecure, and that's probably part of what's stopping them from coming forward. And we have summer, so June 21st to September 21st could be symbolic. Insecurity with courage on the bottom. So this is someone who's really struggling to find confidence right now. So we have the dream, the dream team of change reunion creates exponential growth, highly influential and in agents of change. I never understood what people meant when they used the term power couple. However, since meeting you, I realized how much positive change we can create together. So this is someone who sees the potential of, you know, you and you and them being a power couple. Maybe you work together. Uh, maybe you both talked about starting a business someday together. Um, this is someone who sees that There could be other people's opinions or people who would be jealous of this connection, but this is someone who ultimately is seeing you, you know, if the two of you were together, you would be quite strong. You could be that power couple. <clears throat> we have watching, creates fake accounts to stay up to date, pretends not to care, but becomes obsessive, late night scrolling on social media platforms. So somebody's watching you. Even if I'm gone, I'm still connected to you in some way. I can't cut you off completely, but I am afraid to return. My only interaction with you is through your social media. I miss you. Interesting. And we have dark night, dark night of the soul. So maybe this communication can't happen until they have a dark night of the soul. And maybe they you know, are not having that yet. Maybe they haven't been triggered into that dark night of the soul yet. I know that for feminines, the dark night of the soul can often happen after meeting their twin flame or after separation. Um, but it looks to me like this is someone who until they go through, I bent this card, whoops. This is someone that until they go through this dark night of the soul, it feels like energetically they're being stopped from communicating with you. Dark night of the soul, enhanced awareness of identity, an extremely difficult and painful period, personal and deep development of oneself. I'm fighting my demons and re-examining my actions. It is life altering and also extremely painful at times. I fight against the changes, but I know it must happen for me to evolve. And look at this little sign, help. And I said... You know, you and this person are connected in the 5D, so you can send them loving energy and it works so much better than sending them resentment and anger. Um, anyway, and I've been 
in the resentment and anger part of the journey. I've been there. Again, it just creates more resistance and blockages. Let's keep going. Finding Nemo could be symbolic. <laughs> we have fateful encounter, impossible to avoid, big impact on future, questions your belief system, important life altering event. I think it's interesting that this came out because I started the reading describing counterparts, you know, and how usually you come together very serendipitously. It almost seems like an accident. A lot of counterparts you know, will say, if I had done something different that day, I might not have never met, I might not have ever met that person. Um, anyway, the moment I laid eyes on you, I knew I can't explain how I felt, but I knew I was meant to find you. And what it looks like to me is in meeting you, this person's insecurities could have been very triggered. And in order in order for them to embody that divine masculine, they need to come into inner union with themselves. They need to get over that insecurity. They need to heal and come into that confidence. That's part of their journey. Anyway, I'm very, I'm very ranty today. <laughs> and, you know, this could be someone who's masking this. Like, this could be someone who knows this was a fateful encounter, who knows that it's questioning everything they believe in, but they may be wearing a mask. Look at this. I'm wearing a mask by appearing happy and serene in front of others. When I am alone and I think about you, I realize that I was my true authentic self when I was with you. And I said, this person might have been able to be their true authentic self with you. We have karmic partners. Ooh, divine feminine on the bottom. Love it. So we have karmic partners with gossip. So it feels to me, that's very interesting. Um, it feels to me like there could have been a third party interference here, whether it was gossip, whether it was friends, could have been a lover. Um, and whatever this karmic contract that they have is it was meant to bring the two of you closer together. And again, I know that sounds easy for me to say I've been where you are. Um, when it's happening, it hurts. When you find out there's a karmic, it hurts. And you, a lot of people immediately internalize that and think, well, what's wrong with me? Um, when really it's, it is a karmic lesson that is going in the end to bring the two of you back together. And that's where this outdated thinking doesn't really, I'm kind of spilling over from the last reading I did, but that's where that outdated thinking of, well, if you wanted to, they, or if they wanted to, they would, or if they loved me, they wouldn't have a karmic. What if there's a life, a life, a karmic life lesson they, they need to learn, you know, then it, anyway, <laughs> I'm very ranty today. I should just stop. <laughs> Gluttonous gossip, unable to control and has an overwhelming need to share false or misleading info. Overindulging or overconsumption of personal narratives that may or may not have been true. I'm an idiot. I spoke about our connection as if it was trivial. I didn't respect the sanctity of our connection. Instead of keeping things between me, I allow between me and you, I allowed others to interfere. So there was definitely interference in this connection. We have karmic partners, turbulent with plenty of highs and lows, red flags, codependency, arguments, miscommunication. I know I am settling if I'm not with you, but I feel I am stuck because I'm afraid of change. I'm used to what I have, even if it's not enough for me. I am working on feeling more deserving of you. So this could have been someone who didn't feel deserving of you or who was avoiding growth and change. And maybe when there was a tower moment, instead of reflecting and growing, they feeling insecure, they just went out for and found someone else or... There could have been someone in their energy that was giving them some kind of validation. They were feeling very insecure. They could have had someone that was giving them validation that they just kind of went towards instead of self-reflecting and healing. 
then we have union and in sync, working in perfect rhythm with each other, feeling seen, heard, valued, respected, and cherished, fully present with that person, mind, body, and spirit. This is interesting. I want to commit to you. I want to hold your hand in sickness and in health. I want to walk into the sunset with you and never look back. I need to release certain commitments and fully commit to you. So your person could be with a karmic or they could be, there could be certain things, patterns, toxic behaviors, addictions that they need to release before they're allowed to come back to you. We also have Divine Feminine on the bottom, so you could resonate with Divine Feminine, certainly. Um, and if you are working on your Divine Feminine energy, then this person is probably doing that as well. I'm working on my Divine Feminine side. I, I know I need to be more nurturing, understanding, and compassionate towards myself and others. I want to be more soft and loving, especially towards you. So this could have been someone avoidance right? This could have been someone very cold and detached or someone who had problems showing compassion and empathy. Let's get one more. We have twin flame coming out. Magic. It's magical. And we have Aries. So I've forgotten every sign I've mentioned, but we have Sagittarius and Aries coming out. I said a lot of things I should have not, I should have, I should not have said. I said them out of anger and fear. Sometimes I say things without thinking. I'm sorry for hurting you with my words. Your person. And we have Twin Flame, which I already read at the beginning of this reading. Purpose to live life separately, learning lessons, possible reunion, after becoming stronger and awakened, single souls split in half before reincarnating into two separate bodies. All right, so let's get channeled messages from your person. Your person may have a cycle that they need to look at where they get really intense and react or say hurtful words, say hurtful things. Um, it could also be that, you know, you were, maybe you were stuck in a cycle of chasing this person. Um, Knight of Swords, it feels like this person does have a lot they want to say to you but there could be an emotional distance a physical distance between you and we have the hermit so it feels like instead of talking to you about what they're feeling they kind of are going through this self-reflection <clears throat> I guess this person could be wondering like why you're not chasing them as well The karmic contract could have been, the karmic lesson could have been through work. Um, we have the three of pentacles, whether that was a work colleague or maybe they met someone at work, you would know, you would know. So channeled messages from your person. We're just going to get some tarot for this one. Channeled messages from your person. We've got the higher fence soul contract meant to help you evolve spiritually and we have the four of wands are you freaking kidding me <laughs> um that is interesting that's a whole lot of marriage and commitment um it's also union you know so learning those important lessons before coming back into union and you know maybe for some of you your person was married i wasn't seeing it like it wasn't coming out strongly, but maybe they were married when you met them or you were married. Um, we also have the two of pentacles. So this could be someone kind of going back and forth right now when they think about you. You know, at times they distract themselves, desensitize. Other times, clearly, you know, this card came out. I want to commit to you. I need to release certain commitments so that I can fully commit to you. So there could be some sort of commitment or, again, can it can be like a pattern or a cycle that they need to release before coming back in here. Um, that is interesting. So let's see what your person wants to say to you first. 
We have justice. What is happening here? That's that's a lot. Um, justice. So this person knows they, first of all, karmic lesson. I do feel like this person may have been through some type of karmic lesson that's caused them to see the truth of this situation. Justice as a channeled message from your person shows that they do want to take accountability for something. And there, there's something about truth and accountability uh, making things right between you. There could have been an imbalance in your connection, an energetic imbalance with justice. There could be something they need to take accountability for that they haven't told you. We have the Seven of Swords and the Moon. So it feels like there was deception here or there was lies or things that were hidden. Um, it could be that this person, you know, with the Seven of Swords and the Moon, this person could be reflecting on their Seven of Swords shadows. Um, Seven of Swords can be that avoidant energy that I was talking about. So you could have really illuminated some of this person's shadows when it came to themselves. Um, this person could have been someone who is very hesitant to look at their own shadows. And, you know, maybe they did project onto you. It's also, you know, the moon is divine feminine energy. I feel like this person, I'm hearing, you can see right through me. Because with the high priestess and the moon, that's a highly intuitive energy. Two energies of divine feminine. So you could have seen right through this, this person's lies and deceptions. It's also an energy of running you know, of denying this connection. So this person could have denied this connection out of fear. And we have the Four of Swords. So this person is reflecting and having a moment of clarity about some of their shadows here. Let's get one more. So we have the Three of Swords and the Six of Wands and the Ace of Swords. There's that moment of clarity that I was hearing with the Four of Swords. I, one of the swords was like illuminated. Um, so it does feel like this person, you know, they could have put you in a third party situation here. Um, it does feel like this person feels a lot of pain from your separation. And it feels to me... Like, this person may be having a hard time looking at you online. Um, because we have this watching, and it feels like it almost hurts more to look at you. Um, Six of Wands, you could be getting a lot of attention right now. You could be doing really well. Um, the other thing I was hearing is this Six of Wands can be about ego, you know? And one thing I was hearing when I was talking about the karmics is that this person, when you separated, instead of sitting in that pain and having it going into that Four of Swords energy where they reflect and heal, they could have, again, gotten involved with a karmic or... wanted external validation from someone is what I'm hearing. Let's look at this person's energy. Whatever this is, they've had, you know, a realization about it. They've had a moment of clarity about it. This person could have neglected you, I'm hearing. I'm hearing I'm sorry I didn't make you feel loved so I'm not sure where that's coming from but I'm hearing it let's look at their current energy we have the page of cups so it does look like there's a need to apologize here with the page of cups it is an energy of this person intuitively being guided back towards you it's also a very 
it can be like a more insecure energy. Like this person could be feeling insecure about reaching out to you. Let's get one more. Yeah, we have Eight of Swords and the Sun. So this is someone going through healing and growth. Right now, though, current energy, they could be trapped in a situation. They could be trapped in a karmic situation. They could be trapped in a marriage. Take it as it resonates. Uh, this is someone heavily overthinking about you and feeling very trapped when it comes to reaching out to you, Page of Cups. So something stops them from reaching out. And it could be that, you know, they still have healing to do. They still have lessons to learn. It feels like their mind stops them from coming towards you. Eight of Swords. Trapped, restricted, paralyzed, helpless, powerless, imprisonment. Feeling trapped, suffocated, smothered. That's their energy right now. It's funny, this says, remember, the situation is not as bad as you imagine. So this is someone, especially with the Page of Cups, they imagine the worst. They fear the worst. Um, because the Page of Cups is very much about imagination. Um, so they're imagining the worst. And it, to me, it feels like they're very much in kind of a victim mentality which is probably why spirit is not letting them reach out to you right now because they would probably just come in looking for validation and to have their ego stroked if I'm being honest let's see how they're feeling about you we have the knight of wands and the four of swords so this is someone who is reflecting on the way they ran from this connection um, definitely runner energy. Now, Knight of Wands shows that they're reflecting a lot, Four of Swords on the bottom, they're reflecting a lot about the passion they feel for you and the intensity of this connection. It also looks like this is someone who's reflecting on how they ran from this connection. This could have been someone who is very inconsistent. I almost said inconsiderate. Interesting. Okay, then. We have the Three of Pentacles for how they're feeling about you. Three of Pentacles is the energy of wanting to get on the same page, wanting to reconnect. Um, there is something, the Three of Pentacles can talk about not, in reverse, can talk about not working as a team. And just that inconsistent energy that's coming through this person could be realizing that again they failed to give you what you needed here they maybe didn't give enough time and energy to this connection now with three of pentacles that could also be that this person spoke to others about you or other people got involved in this connection We have the Three of Cups for how they're feeling about you. So there is this energy of wanting to reconnect with you. It just feels to me like right now this person is being stopped from it um, for your own protection, I'm hearing. We had the Three of Pentacles come out, the Three of Cups, the Three of Swords. So 333 three, three could be symbolic. Definitely feels like there could have been a karmic or third party energy here. The opinions of family and friends. The opinions of friends. And I just keep seeing an imbalance in the energy. So like you could have been giving way more chaser energy. You could have been giving more to this connection. And maybe they started giving less. Let's get one more for feelings about you. We have the Fool and the Queen of Swords. So... It does feel like they want to take a leap of faith towards you, but something stops them. And it does, this Queen of Swords shows me that they feel like even if they were to take a leap of faith towards you, that you may not want to hear from them. Um, you could have cut this person off for foolish behavior is what I'm hearing as well. Let's look at their intentions. We have the three of wands. Now we have we have all the threes out except the empress. So their intentions are to progress towards you, three of wands. 
and the sun shows they want to illuminate something to you. They want to heal this. The sun is very positive energy. Um, let's look at the three of wands. I opened up to the three of swords. Interesting. Three of Wands, momentum, confidence, growth, foresight, looking ahead. So they are looking ahead and their intentions, once they have the confidence and the growth, their intentions are to come forward. Next stage in relationship, romantic momentum, creating a lasting foundation. Three of Wands, that's their intentions. So after they heal, even this one talks about confidence and growth the sun so this person's intentions once they've worked on their confidence and once they've undergone a certain amount of growth and personal development then I feel like they're going to be allowed to come back towards you I have to say it like that <coughs> I feel like right now they're not being allowed to come towards you and look we have another energy just like that once enough growth has happened they're going to progress towards you. The chariot and the two of cups and the empress. Now we have all threes. Three, 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 three. <laughs> so again, until there's enough, you're the empress. Until there's enough growth, they're not being allowed near you is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Let's look at what action they'll take. We have the Wheel of Fortune, making changes, making adjustments. I really like that for actions. Once they hit a turning point, divine timing, fate is going to allow them to come back in. Um, I really like that. And if you look at this image, I think this is from the Nine of Cups, this person. Um, here we have the person on the death card. So it feels like after... A transformation they come back in and that archway is also on the sun card which we saw anyway that's pretty cool and on the bottom we have the knight of cups and the ace of wands so there's the action there's the person feeling more confident following their intuition wanting to this is a romantic offer ace of wands is inspired action so it feels like this person has a breakthrough moment where again, spirit is allowing them to communicate with you. But I honestly feel we have the King of Swords, truth and clarity, communication, Nine of Swords in reverse, wanting to share with you, wanting to talk to you. Temperance, wow. Anyway, I cut myself off, whatever I was saying. What's currently blocking this connection? What is blocking this connection? We have the Four of Cups and the Five of Wands. So there is blockages. Five of Wands is blockages. Um, there could be competition. There could be outside influences here, other people. Um, five of Wands, rivalry, rivalry. <laughs> Disagreements, misunderstandings, interesting, there could be, comp listen, five of wands mentions comparison, so if your person has a karmic and you are internalizing that, and feeling like there's something wrong with you and you're comparing yourself to that karmic, that creates a blockage in the energy. Um, anyway, and you know, I'm not sure if you have people in your energy that this person feels they would have to compete with. Four of Cups is a blockage. It feels like this person needs to have an epiphany about this connection is what I'm hearing. Um, I 
I just want to look at what this blockage is. There could be hurt and rejection here in the past that is blocking this or fear of rejection. Definitely your person. The Four of Cups, this is your, you, listen, I asked about a blockage and you have the two cards in the deck that talks about blockages, which is the Five of Wands and the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups represents boredom, self-isolation, and blockage. Stuck in a rut. So right now your person may be stuck in a bit of a rut that's keeping them blocked, you know? Um, take that one about competition too. Because if you're someone who's comparing yourself to the people in this person's life, that creates a blockage. What is your advice about this connection? We have the hanged man. Separation is needed, is what I'm hearing. Separation is needed. And this is in order to have growth here. So, you know... Like I said, it seems like logically, it seems silly to say two people need to separate in order to become closer, but in a counterpart connection, in a connection like this, it is necessary. Um, your advice to spend this time of separation, first of all, there's something about surrendering to the journey. So learning how to surrender to this journey, not question it, stop calling yourself delusional, I'm hearing. Um, there's also something here about while in separation to look at your past wounding because we have the six of cups here and the six of cups points towards past wounds, past life wounding. Um, you could have had, you know, some intense wounding in a past life that is affecting you in this lifetime. It's also, you know, childhood wounding. Um, for some reason, I'm feeling called to tell you to connect to your inner child as well. So during the separation, learning how to connect to your inner child, if you don't know how to do that, I suggest looking it up. There's lots of ways to connect to your inner child and it can be very healing. And I'm also seeing that this separation does have the potential to bring union here and reconciliation with the Six of Cups. This separation is meant to be healing this connection. And that's exactly what's happening. Let's look at future energy of this connection. We have the Four of Swords and the Queen of Cups. So that's quiet. That's taking a break. Queen of Cups focusing on self-love. So that I almost said near future energy. So I feel like that's what this is. Um, near future energy, you focusing on self-love, listening to your intuition, trusting your intuition. Perhaps, you know, you're meant to be a healer of some sort. We do see quiet energy between you for the next, like, at least a month, I'm hearing. Let's look at future, future energy. <laughs> we have the Ten of Cups. Ha! Huh. Happily ever after. And, you know, the Ten of Cups has a lot to do with inner healing and fulfillment. If you are not happy with yourself and you don't have self-love, how are you ever going to believe somebody else loves you? So when you do get that energy of Ten of Cups with someone, if you don't love yourself and you don't have self-love and confidence, eventually that energy dissipates and... In order to truly have this Ten of Cups, you need to have it within, is my point. And the Ten of Cups, in part of the shadow aspect of the Ten of Cups, is inner work is needed. So after the inner work is done, the potential here is happiness, happily ever after, happy family, emotional fulfillment. But the inner healing has to happen. So... It's so important for the feminine to look at their healing as well. It's not just about the masculine healing their wounds. You both have wounds you're meant to be healing. And by doing the inner work, just like that twin flame card said, by doing the inner work, it brings you in. It Where is it? 
purpose to live life separately, learning lessons, possible reunion after becoming stronger and awakened after doing the inner healing. Um, so that's what's coming through there. <clears throat> what do I want to get you now? Maybe we'll get a couple of twin flame message cards. I think I'm going to use this deck today. I haven't used this deck in a little while. Right away we have, I care about you even when I act like I don't. I'm hiding my true feelings because I feel vulnerable. And that came out in the yellow cards, the masking. So let's see what is up. Interesting. You have three cards talking about a dark night of the soul. You had it in this deck, and then we had the eight of swords come out, and now we have the eight here, dark night of the soul. Ooh. Your person has some awakening energy here. I just saw one about not feeling like they deserve your love. Again, if someone feels like they don't deserve your love, it will stop them from coming towards you. Oh, I hate that card. So we have, you show up in my dreams. It helps me process buried memories. Remember the card about being connected in the 5D. And that is, your, the deck is closed. Look at that. So I'm going to start with the card in this deck that I do not like. And it is the communication, please contact me card. Now, I'm not telling anybody to contact anyone. Um, from what I know of the journey, that can delay things, that can stop awakenings from happening like this person could be on the cusp of an awakening or just about to learn a karmic lesson and let's say you reach out and it could delay that it doesn't stop it but it can delay that from happening and it, and it can just make things take longer um, take it from somebody who knows <laughs> so this card when it comes out I will tell you to truly listen to your intuition of whether or not you should reach out or not, you need to weigh the pros and cons of reaching out because how are you going to feel if you reach out and they read your message and say nothing? Is it, is it going to trigger that chaser energy in you? Is it going to trigger your fear of abandonment or your abandonment issues? If this person gets your message and then tells you, I don't know why you're messaging me. I told you I don't see a future with you. It's going to make you feel worse. You know, it's going to. You really need to think about all the things that could happen and how they would make you feel. And is it worth it when you are in the middle of your own healing journey? Um, because reaching out to someone and having them read the message and not reply or reply in a harsh way can actually delay your own healing. And one thing I say when this card comes out is you, and I said it when, when the 5D card came out, you can contact them in other ways. You can, you can send them love and light and energy. You can talk to them without talking to them. So just talk out loud as if you're talking to them. You can journal. You can write an email and never send it. Like you can write them a letter and not send it. If you're connected in the 5D, they will get that message, whether you send it or not. Um, if you really wanted to, you could. Uh, I don't want to encourage this, <laughs> but you could post something online that, you know, not directly, not directed at this person, but maybe there's you know something that if you posted it they would know that you were thinking about them again i'm not promoting that um 
But again, it's it's a really tricky situation. And I never understood it when I first started on this journey. And readers would be like, don't reach out, don't reach out, don't reach out. Um, I didn't understand it. And I was someone who was like, well, I can reach out. I can, uh, I don't have to do things the way that these readers are telling me to do. I can reach out. Anyway, take it from someone who knows. <clears throat> Again, you can reach out energetically and they'll still get the message. I'm going through a dark night of the soul. Nothing in my life is making sense. Our love will manifest through the union of heart and mind. Expanding these areas allows our love to grow. And if you don't believe it, then it can't happen. I just have to say that. So this is what this card is talking about. The union of heart and mind. It means... It means that your mind is no longer fighting this. It means in your mind that you believe it can happen and that you trust in the journey. I always feel bad when I see someone in the comment section saying, I don't think this will ever happen for me or I doubt it. Blockages. You're creating a blockage in the energy by doubting it. Um, anyway, and I know it's hard not to doubt it. Please don't give up on me. I'm trying to change, but it takes time. Healing takes a lot of dang time. Eight, words have hurt me in the past, and that's why I fear talking to you. So there could have been hurtful arguments. I am awakening. I know more than I am letting on. Past lives are influencing our connection. I've lost you in other lifetimes, and that makes me afraid. I need to heal the grief and allow the love to bloom. Interesting, because your advice... Very interesting. I mentioned past lives. I'm conflicted about whether I have what it takes to be your partner. So there's that insecurity, the lack of confidence. You think I'm not listening to you, but I am. I hear everything you say and even replay our conversations in my head. And I bet you, if you were to talk out loud to this person without picking up that phone, they, they'd be able to hear you. Um... I feel like this person maybe hears you in their head sometimes. I'm tired of being away from you physically. I'm trying to process my fears so that I can come back to you. When I let myself go deeper into thoughts of you, I can feel my heart opening. I'm listening to my higher self now. A higher power is guiding me. And we did see that with the Page of Cups. They are tapping into their intuition. Our mission is to be unconditional love. Clearing our programming is a necessary part of opening our hearts. And I already ranted about programming. I want to let my guard down with you, but fear makes me lash out in self-defense. Remember that Seven of Swords card? We are one. Don't let fear get in the way of this truth. Again, fear creates blockages. Doubt creates blockages. Anyway. I'm going to leave it here, my friends. <laughs> I'm sending you lots of love and light. Um, and I will talk to you next time. Hang in there. And again, think about whether or not you actually want to communicate. Weigh, weigh the pros and cons. Um, because it can, again, it can delay your healing journey if you put yourself out there and you don't get the reaction that you were hoping to get. But anyway. Again, I'm sending you lots of love and light, and I will talk to you soon, my friends. Bye.